The Energy Plus weather details are available in the building and the energy program. So here we are in building. If we go to the general option and we go into further details, you can see here this has been reworked to include the EPW weather. So you've got the standard MEP works weather as is, as you're all used to. And we've got the addition to MEP, the EPW DD. So you would toggle to this one. You can choose. Using the choose option will take you out to the chooser, as discussed in the previous video under the weather database section, even though it's not a database. Um, browse allows you to pick the location. So you would browse and from your range of weather data sets, pick the location of interest. And view allows you to view the details of the weather detail information, um, including the direct solar radiation. So you have your cooling design day, your heating design day with your temperatures, wind speed. A lot of this is relevant to the calculations, by the way. Um, winter design temperature, your wet and dry bulb for your cooling loads. And then you have your direct solar radiation table. So these are actually measured data. So we've moved away from the direct and diffuse basic factors that SIBSI uses, which is way out of date now. And this affords a much higher level of accuracy. Also, you can view the diffuse solar radiation. You've also got the global horizontal solar radiation. And then you have the dry bulb temperatures, the wet bulb temperatures. And another new thing we've introduced is the ground temperatures. So for the heat loss calculations, depending on the month of selection, it will look at these ground temperatures and apply the delta T in accordance with the difference between the ground temperature specified here and the room temperature that you're currently defining. So it will give you a much more accurate floor loss calculation. Word of warning here, um, when looking at these weather data sets, for example, the Bristol Weather Centre design data set has quite a lot of information in it. So it's worth reviewing because the first data set in the list doesn't necessarily reflect the highest temperature. So the first one we've loaded is the 28.2. But if we looked at another um, weather data set, for example, if I was to select um, August, for example, that's 27, that's slightly less. So it's always worth reviewing the, the weather data sets um, to see what's happening. So if you're doing cooling, likely it's not June, July, August. If I select July, it's 24. So depending on the weather data set, um, you can get some slightly higher temperatures by picking other, picking other data sets. In this case, um, it does appear that the first one in the list is, on the face of it, one of the um, hottest locations. So I'll pick the first one. It takes me back to 26. There are higher temperatures available. So you do need to review this data. Um, you could actually clear it from your database if you wanted to, um, just to include the, the maximum temperatures. So all the information is in here. See, in August, we're 30.6. So you might want to use that. Um, for your data. You can actually edit the Energy Plus weather file. There's another video for that which we've done so that you can go at source, give it a, a reference. So if you're applying um, requirements from a consultant where they are dictating what the temperatures are going to be, then you need to put those in. So that's another video where you can actually um, load that data up. So this will afford you a much higher level of accuracy. It will allow you to look at um, glazing gains in the winter because obviously to date the software has only looked at uh, July, August, September, the peak months for cooling but it does actually allow you to look at um, cooling loads in the winter so if you for example have a glazed facade with an overhang where the, the, the overhang protects the glass in the summer because the sun is higher in the sky in the winter the sun's lower in the sky you might actually get a larger glazing gain in the winter so it does allow you to make Prop the software a bit more, make one or two more detailed assumptions um, and perform more detailed calculations. So that's the Energy Plus data being used. And these, this is the reviewing of all of the, the data that's provided with the weather information. Moving into the Energy Programme, things are a little bit different. Um, if we go to the Edit General Plants, we have the weather option there. This only allows us really to review the data and, and change the location of interest. So we can actually select and change the location of interest here. Um, and that will obviously populate the building program as well. So you can make a change here. 
um, it's change your weather details and you can still review the data but obviously you can't change location and you can't choose to download new information you can purely review what's here and change your preferred weather data set that you want to run the calculations on in the energy program